if a person were to walk into this church, let me give you a description of this person. A good man, not only he knew the law, he also obeyed it. He was generous, faithful, and disciplined in every way. Do you think he would be a good member to this church? He might start becoming? Okay, you guys are being political now. <laughs> On his resume, he looks good, doesn't he? You know. I'm talking about Nicodemus. You guys know him? Let me read the passage, John 3, 1 to 6. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform these miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. See, Nicodemus had all the right things on the resume. He seemed like an ideal member, principled, knowledgeable, morally upstanding, courteous, and humble. However, Nicodemus had a big problem. What was that? He was spiritually dead. He had all these good things going for him, but he was spiritually dead. So is it possible to be religious and lost. Gronagan Pites Gorsvats. I practiced that half hour. Is it possible, especially in our in our background? I think I'm gonna stay put today. It's a good day for you. <laughs> In our background of the, I grew up in an Armenian church, a church system that tradition was a great, great pillar of our doctrine. But going through this in, uh, in Colossians, especially uh, this morning as well, in Cornerstone, if you look at verse 8, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy. This is Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware anyone, anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to traditional men, according to basic principles of the world, but not according to Christ. So it is possible to have tradition, but not according to Christ. Not every, as Armenians, we are heavy, big into tradition. Our traditions identify us for the most part. Most of them keep us Armenian. It defines who we are for the most part. But it is possible to have those traditions rooted in man rather than Christ. I want to go to the Old Testament today to, um, to a passage that really grabbed my attention, and that is the reason for today's message. As I was going through 2 Kings, this one line really got my attention. 2 Kings 17, verses 32 to 35. I will start reading. See if you can catch it. They worshiped the Lord 
but they also appointed all sorts of their own people to officiate for them as priests in the shrines and the high places. They worshipped the Lord, but they also served their own gods in accordance with the customs of the nations from which they had been bought. To this day, they persist in their former practices. They neither worship the Lord nor adhere to the decrees and the ordinances, the law and the commands of the Lord that he gave to uh, descendants of Jacob, whom he named Israel. When the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites, he commanded them to do not worship any other gods or bow down to them, serve them or sacrifice to them. Did you catch what I'm referring to here? This is the verse that really nails it, verse 33, as I read. They worship the Lord, but they also serve their own gods. Is it possible to worship the Lord and save your own gods? It's a question. Is it possible? No, absolutely not. It's not possible to serve the Lord and serve something or someone else. But these people are caught in this. It's a warning for us. It's, these people thought that they were serving the Lord. They continued on their way, but they weren't saved. How do we know? Because it says they continued in their old ways. What, what is one of the biggest signs that we are saved? A changed life. There needs to be a before and after picture. Before I was like this, today I'm like that. There has to be a difference. Maybe at times, because I've had this conversation with a few of you, at times the outward picture is not so drastically changed. But at least on the inside, there has to be a huge difference between before and after. You see, I can't continue to, w to live and think, to feel, to look at things from a certain perspective and then say that I'm born again and have nothing changed. I cannot worship the Lord and also my own gods. It's not a possibility. It is an oxymoron. Give me an example of an oxymoron, Brian. Sorry to put you on the spot, just like that. <laughs> Jumbo shrimp, there you go, that's a good one. What else? Working vacation. Working vacation. That's, a, that's, that's, a, that's good. Ser, serving the Lord and having your own gods. It's an oxymoron. What's another one? Soft rock. Soft rock. <laughs> yeah, that's, I like that. That's soft rock, that's true. A man who's right next to his wife. That's an axiom. <laughs> what else? It's not possible, guys. It's not possible to have the Lord as your God and have your own version of what he should be and having your own little gods on the side. It's not possible. And um, I wanted to... Go to this verse where, um, do you guys all remember when uh, Israel rebelled against God and Moses in the, in the desert? Yeah, I'll read it to you. It's in um, Numbers 21, 5 to 10. They spoke against God and against Moses and they said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread, there is no water. And we detest this miserable food, meaning the manna. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We've sinned, we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8, The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. 
So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone who was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake lived. Do you guys all remember? You guys understood the story, right? So there is a relic, okay, with a bronze snake on it that God had used to heal people because his servant Moses prayed. Fast forward to a time in 2 Kings 18 to a king Hezekiah. This is what the Bible, this is how the Bible explains him. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, neither before him or after him. He was a good king. He walked with the Lord. Let's look what this good king did. In the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, the king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, the king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. Now, this is what he did. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake that the Moses had made. Wait a minute. What just happened here? This was something that Moses made. This was something that God told Moses to make to do healing, to do his purpose. And this is being broken into pieces by a king the Bible calls good. What's wrong here? That's right. It has taken the wrong image. Yes, it did come from God. But they warped its purpose. They diluted it. They changed it. He broke into pieces the bronze snake that Moses had made, for up to that time, the Israelites has been burning incense to it. You see, they were worshipping a symbol, not the God who made that simple symbol. Not God who healed them, but they started worshipping the tool that God used to heal them. They missed the picture. So, when I think about the way I grew up in a certain church, we had these great mystical objects. You know, there would be a gold-covered Bible that would walk by and we would kiss it, but not read it. We would make the sign of the cross in front of this beautiful, very ornate cross, but don't really comprehend, don't really understand what it means to be in front of that cross. We were walking to this environment of incense and vibrant colors and paintings and candles. But it will be totally about the experience. Not about God who's calling me into a relationship with him. It's not about the bronze snake. It's about the God that told Moses to make that bronze snake. It's about the God that did the healing. Bronze snake did not do the healing. People were expecting Miracles from a bronze snake. No, you need to look at people. You need to look at God, not to the bronze snake. Very somber uh, passage. Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, this is Jesus now, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say that day to me, 
Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. But I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. We always think that Jesus over here is talking about to the unbelievers. We always think that Jesus over here is talking to people that write Christian on an application but don't really go to church. Uh -uh. Jesus over here is talking, maybe, for most of us. Most of your loved ones, maybe. You see, my profession of faith means nothing if it's just words. If I just walk down an aisle, raise my hand, or, or pray the prayer, and nothing is changed in my life, Jesus is talking to me. Look, the, the word Lord, Lord, you guys know, it's, it's the old Hebrew way of stressing something out, emphatically saying, Lord, Lord, you're important in my life. It's kind of like underlining something and highlighting it. You know, when Jesus said, truly, truly, I tell you, he's saying, listen, it's very important, truly, listen to me. And same way, these people are going to go and say, Lord, Lord, Underlined, highlighted. Your name is underlined in my life. It's highlighted. I walk around with Jesus with fluorescent colors on my head. Lord, Lord. I called him Lord. I worked for him. Maybe I was a pastor. Maybe I was an elder. Maybe I was a missionary. I've done this and that. Question is not my professional faith. Question is not even do I know him. Question is, does he know me? Yes, he's God and he knows everyone. True. But does he know me? I heard this illustration. Someone said, uh, if I was to go to the White House and say to the security guards, I want to see the president. I know him. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. They'll probably say, okay, see you, pal, go ahead. But if the president wants to come up and say, hey, Steve, come on in, that means he knows me. Same thing with God. Jesus is saying, I never knew you. Does he know me? It is a relationship. It's not enough to say, I'm a sinner, God forgive me, and everything's going to be good. No. You see, I don't know if you realized... But we spoke about two sides of the equation. One is faith, the other one is works. You've got to have both. One group trusted in its faith, not have the works that go along with it, not have the changed life. The other part trusted the opposite. You've got to have both. I have to have my faith. I have to have my profession of faith, and I have to have the, proof, uh, the fruit that proves it. See, I can't say I'm a Christian and live an ungodly life. It's not possible. I can't say I am born again by the grace of God and live in adultery. It's not possible. Continue lying. I can't do that. This is not true Christianity. If that's you today, you're lying to yourself. And Jesus will tell you, I never knew you. So, is it possible to go to Bible studies, go to church, give to God and pray and be lost? Yes, it is. It's about a deep relationship. It's about how important he is in my life. It doesn't matter if name is, his name is underlined or highlighted in my life. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does, only after. It's got to be real. This relationship has to be real. We all, all of us, need to get 
to that deeper level of the knowledge of God. None of us here are brand new Christians. We need to grow and grow deeper in Christ. There is no stopping in the faith life. No such thing as staying still. Okay, I made it. <laughs> no. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. There's no stopping. So my challenge to you today, wherever you are in your faith, your walk. One, make sure it's real. Two, go deeper.